In the first six episodes of Time Slip, we saw Liz and Simon fall into a time bubble and get carried backwards in time. But what is a time bubble? Well, you can't see it, of course, but it may help you to visualize it, to think of it as a balloon. Some scientists are now working on the theory that wherever you are, you are at the very center of the universe, and that the universe is really one giant sphere, and that it has an edge to it. Information about events is flashing constantly back and forth between you and the edge of that sphere. So that at any given moment, you are mixed up in the past, the present, and the future, virtually all at the same moment. But supposing some little patch of that information, some little patch of history, gets slowed down, and instead of flashing backwards and forth, it floats gently, as if in a bubble. Well, it might have collided with some solid object and got temporarily halted in its tracks, or it might be being slowed by some mysterious force. Or the edge of the universe might have a hole in it. Well, supposing you could somehow get into that time bubble, that bubble of history, and travel, travel with it, then you could move forwards and backwards in time at will. Watch now as Liz and Simon move once again through time. We'd better get her closer to the fire. Is she really cold? Of course, she's cold, man. She's shivering. Does she feel cold? No. Ah. So, what's happened to Liz and Simon now, I wonder? They're sharing something with her, obviously. Terrible cold. Yes. But Liz and Simon have come back through the barrier, haven't they? I thought they only had to get through the hole in the fence to be back in their own time. Yes, so did I. But in an area like this, one's always learning. the infirmary. There's another one outside. Oh, maybe memory bank. Oh, no. Oh, that's 
Matrix Edit, wipe, memory, computer wipe, memory, computer correct, 494, asterisk zero, all of that. No sign of frostbite. That's remarkable. I was out on my rounds and found them near the slabs. But how's it possible, Dr. Bukov? Why no frostbite? Split me, it's 80 below out there. Wait a minute. Wasn't there a carrier drop scheduled for today? Yes, but only for supplies, not for persons. Then there's no conceivable way they could have got here. We shall have to use the resuscitation tent. Bukov, you look after the boy. There's a good chap. Of course, Dr. Jackson. They seem so young. <laughs> Very hardy youngsters, Beth. <laughs> but you know, even if they'd only been out there on the ice for five minutes, they should have been dead by now, dressed in these queer clothes. Oh, it's a mystery, whichever way you look at it. That girl? Mm hmm? Oh, I don't know. Right. That should do it. Well, on the form, I'd say that these two fledglings are going to come up smiling and baffle medical science. I don't understand it. The great thing about that is, Beth, we don't need to. For the various super brains we've got around this place, we wouldn't need to know. Has the director been informed yet? Professor Devereux is still programming the computer, Dr. Joynton. He'll be notified when it's convenient. sign of them. But that doesn't mean they hadn't come back through the barrier. If they had, we'd have seen them back at the inn by now. Yes, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? Well, then. Mrs. Skinner, you've really lost all touch with them, have you? I think so. There's nothing now. Just that terrible feeling of cold after they reached the fence, and then nothing. Cold, yes. Now, look here, trainer. What's happened? You're the expert in these matters. You must know. I told you before, Skinner, this is an area in which I'm always learning. Now, Mrs. Skinner, I think perhaps we'd better go back to the hotel and wait there. There's precious little more we can do here. Yes, I expect you're right. Computer, clean. No, Larry. I can manage. Proceed according to schedule. Put the computer back on order control. Yes, Director. I think you'll find. Larry! You made a minimal mistake when recording the pulse readings this morning. I'm sorry, Director. The computer was quite explicit about it. I've told staff members these things must be correct to the microdecimal. It's the only way of ensuring that everyone gets his accurate dose of HA57. Of course, Director. I'm sorry, Director. Human error. Last enemy in a technological world. But, Director... Yeah? I thought you were going to find out that is... Well, ma'am, what is it? Come on. That stop-off in the laboratory water supply late last night, sir. I mentioned it to you. It was recorded as lasting three minutes when I made my check this morning. You said you'd investigated on BrainLink. Human error again, Larry. The computer abnegates all responsibility. The computer can't lie, so the fault must be elsewhere. See what we're up against. Excuse me, Director. Ah, yes, Beth. Report... The new arrivals. Oh, yes, of course. You know about them, sir. I've been on brain link to the computer, Beth. Their coming was noted by the area scanners and the information passed on, but it wasn't very clear. It seems that they are young people. Yes. Bukov found them out on the ice. On the ice? Half dead. Well, well. And children. Come in, Beth. Come in. Where am I? Take it easy. You're in the icebox. Icebox? Oh, that's what we call it, anyway. <laughs> that's where you were heading for. The International Institute for Biological Research. Okay? Oh, look. 
Your brother's waking up too. He's not my brother. Raring to go by the looks of him. Well, boyfriend then. He's not my boyfriend either. You mean you don't know him? Look, Simon's just... Simon. I haven't got a boyfriend. Take it easy, I said. At least you seem to know his name. And no sign of any ill effects on him either. Well, I call this the funniest thing I've struck. So let's get the whole story, shall we? Look, I'm Dr. Joynton, you're Simon, and you're... Uh, Liz. Liz. And you both of you came in on the drop carrier, right? Only then started wandering off from the shelter. Oh, that was a very silly thing to do. You might get away with it once, but you couldn't hope to do so a second time. We've, uh... We're in the icebox, Simon. Icebox? Yes. That's what they call it. You remember? The International Institute for... For Biological Research. That's it. You remember? Oh, yes. Yes. You bet. We didn't get a notification that you were coming, apparently. That's queer. Aren't you a bit young for all this, really? Oh, well, I'll just put out a video flash that you've come round. Um, Dr. Joynton, hmm? where is this place exactly? You mean you don't know? No. But, Sonny boy, if you're a volunteer, you must have been given a destination briefing. Oh, well, they, uh, they didn't tell us. This whole place has been constructed under the ice, hasn't it? Which is why they call it the ice box. <laughs> He'll go far, this one. Well, I suppose I didn't think it was going to be so cold out there. I've never felt cold like that before. Well, the South Pole, just down the road. What else did you expect? South Pole? Incidentally, you might have had the sense to put on some more protective clothing when you left the carrier. The Antarctic in winter isn't Palm Beach, my children. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, I think. Why, of course, Director. The message from the computer's quite clear. Isolate from the memory bank, please, Beth. Convert to captions. There, you see, a complete briefing from the computer, plain as day, earmarked for action. Expect arrival soon, list, it says. Must I attend to everything myself in this place? Larry! Yes, Director? Reference, computer memory bank, AB494 stroke Z. Scan immediately. Let me have your comments, soon as possible. Ah, if it's about the new arrivals, Director. Yeah? Well, I did a bit of checking myself. We had no confirmation from Central Control that they'd actually got around to sending any volunteers. So I didn't think the experiment AB494Z was to be considered operational. If confirmation had been necessary, the computer would have requested it. Can't you understand this, Larry? I'm tired of telling people that I programmed the computer to attend to things like this by itself. Yes, Director. Don't pit your wits against the computer, man. You'll discover one day you haven't a chance. The human element, Beth. Sometimes I think the human element will frustrate everything I'm trying to do here. You're just upset, Director. If those two volunteers had been left stranded on the ice, we'd have had to answer for that. The computer, Beth, every day I linked with, perfecting it, refining its operations. If I'm not prevented by fools, one day I'll bring it to such a peak of perfection, there will be nothing I can do. But you've achieved so much already, Director. There's no reason to feel depressed. The icebox has long since justified its existence, if that's what you mean, Beth, but scientific experimentation is a road without an ending. We must push on. Our task is to remake the imperfect world, to advance the human species beyond its own understanding. 
Would you like to see the new arrivals now, sir? Dr. Joynton's video flash said they were ready for interview. Director, the new arrivals. No, Beth. No, I have something more important to do right now. I'll leave them in your hands till we're ready to discuss the experiment, introduce them to the place, show them their way around. Yes, Director. And Beth? Yes, Director. Why is it I can talk to you, I wonder? Only you seem to understand. You'll find out why it's called that. In you go. So, our orphans of the snows, they're all right now. They might just as well have been sunbathing out there. I don't get it. Well, what do people do here? Just relax. Take it easy after a hard day's work. It's a sort of a fun room, really. But there are one or two special features. Now, over here, look. One for you, Dr. Goodall. Oh, thank you, Dr. Joint, and I've been waiting for this. The computer prints off copies of the world's newspapers as soon as the papers reach the streets. And here, you can tune in to any news bulletin, any television program on Earth. And uh, here... It's fantastic. Now, here, you can listen to music. Although the space is small, it's worked out by the computer that it's just like being at a concert. And it doesn't interfere with anyone else, either. And here, come along. Now, this is the device that gives the room its special name, the fantasy apparatus. You put this on, and you get a straight brain link to the computer. Then the computer takes over your dream and makes it come alive. Do you have to go to sleep? Oh, no, 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 no. You just shut your eyes and relax. Uh, would you like to try it? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, it's a very pleasant experience, really. It's like being in a film, instead of just looking at it, if you know what I mean. I always go home in fantasy. Well, where is home, Dr. Joynton? I come from New Zealand. <laughs> We're a very international community here, but I seem to miss the old places more than the others. Yes, I do. <laughs> You find it unusual, huh? I've, I've never come across anything like it. It's quite new. Oh, I'm Bukov, by the way. I picked you up outside. Oh, then I suppose we both ought to say thanks very much, sir. We shouldn't have strayed from the shelter. <laughs> you certainly shouldn't. This, this computer Dr. Joynton's talking about, it must be a pretty advanced sort of machine to be able to do all she says it does. Oh, the computer is everything here. More important than us. We are simply its servants. Heat, light, food. We depend upon the computer entirely. It even guides our research. Uh, you're here for the AB experiment, aren't you? AB experiment? Well, that's what the record said. Oh, oh yes, of, of course. There'll be no action for a while. We come at things gently here. First of all, they have to put you on HA57. And that takes a week or two in itself. What's HA57? You don't know about that. Oh, of course, it's a secret outside the icebox. Well, my boy, you're in... Ah, oh, there you are. The new arrivals. The sleeping quarters are on the floor below. You'll be a lot of places in due time. You've no right to be here. Why did you follow me? Don't let me catch you interfering. That's a director's office. You never go in there without permission. Well, 
Well, what do you know, company? Oh, Larry, these are the new arrivals. Simon and Liz. Larry, the technician who services the computer. Hi, Simon. Great to have you with us. And Liz? Well, certainly a pleasure to have another pretty girl around the place. You must forgive Larry. He's a little light-minded. Likes to try and make clever remarks. Nothing clever about that. Statement of fact, that's all. Perhaps you wouldn't mind explaining the computer to them, Larry. The director asked me to introduce them to the icebox. But as it happens, I've had enough of that for the moment. Quite enough. What's the matter with her? Ah, don't take it too seriously. Beneath that rough exterior, there beats a heart of purest leather. What? <laughs> the computer, Liz? So meet the computer. It attends to all our needs here. You name it, the computer does it. Ah, over here is the important bit. Now, this is where the daily dosage of HA57 is delivered. It has to be freshly prescribed every morning for each individual according to changes in body temperature, pulse rate and all that. Look, what is this HA57? The longevity drug. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, longevity. Long life? The drug stops the process of decay, so people who take it simply don't grow any older. You, you mean they can live forever? Oh, uh, I'll have to have notice of that question. But it's certainly the biggest discovery the director has made since the icebox was founded. Take Dr. Joynton now. How old would you say she was? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. She's getting on for a hundred. No! On the level! Blimey! And you, Larry? Uh-uh. What we do in the icebox is to test out new biological techniques until we're sure they're safe for release to the public, Liz. There can be side effects often enough. We have to find out about that. Well, the things you're doing here, they're pretty way ahead, aren't they? I mean, the outside world doesn't know a thing like the longevity drug is possible. Oh, just as well it doesn't. Look at that business of brain-computer links. People were going about it in the wrong way and doing themselves a lot of harm until we perfected a system in 1985. Perfected when? Hmm? You said you perfected brain-computer links in... 1985. Something the matter with you two? No. It's just 1985. Well, that would be... How many years ago now? What's up? Forgotten how to count? No. Look, Larry, we're, we're just a bit confused, getting lost on the ice and that. Uh -huh. But 1985, six, seven... I'd say you are confused. 1985 ought to be uh, five years ago to my reckoning. Isn't this 1990? to be part of some new experiment or other. They think we're a couple of guinea pigs. Do you think the time barrier is still there? Look! If we wear these we're on the ice, we won't collapse again. Ah, oh, Dr. Bukoff, I wanted to ask you about Liz and Simon. You simply discovered them out on the ice, you said. Yes, Beth. And there was no indication that they could have come from the drop shelter. There's nowhere else they could have come from. I think I'd better have another word with them. Hurry, get the door open. I'll have to make a dash for it. No! Simon! Simon! That room! Mum! Hey, you two, what do you think you're doing? Stop! I can't. Come back! Look, pull yourself together, we're gonna run for it! But Simon, you don't understand, you know who was in that room? It was Mummy! 